If you just clicked on this video, it's probably because you're trying to figure out the best way to set your gains. Along the way, you've stumbled across these devices right here, the Steve Me Designs DD1 and DD1 Plus. Now on the surface, these two things appear to be almost identical. Both have a sturdy plastic case. Both use a nine volt battery. Both of them have these silicon slip covers. The cover on the DD1 is blue. The cover on the DD1 Plus is red. They both use an RCA style plus in order to accept the test leads. Both of them detect distortion the exact same way. These are not clip lights. They're not looking for clipping. These things are actually testing for 1% total harmonic distortion. Using a 1% THD threshold is better than just looking for a clip signal on an oscilloscope, especially if you're building something for sound quality or if you're setting up your mids and highs. You can really hear that distortion in that situation. Now for your subwoofer, that's a little bit less important. In fact, some people actually like their subwoofers to sound just a little bit distorted. The other thing to remember is that the proper way to set the gains is not just about setting the gain at the amplifier. It's also real important that you verify the point at which the head unit hits 1% THD along with anything else in your signal chain like any kind of equalizer or signal processor that you might be using. This is a mini DSP 8x12. If you want to learn more about it, let me know down in the comments and if you want to check it out, I'll give you a link to it. What I'm going to do right now is hook both of these up to an amplifier so that you can see if there's any performance difference between the two devices. For this demonstration, I'm going to be using one of these JP8 amplifiers. Again, I'll give you a link to it down in the description if you want to learn more about it. So immediately you can see some differences between the two devices. The first thing you're going to notice is that the DD1 Plus has an LCD screen and it's going to be showing you the voltage as well as the frequency. So it's detecting a 40 hertz frequency and displaying the voltage. As opposed to the DD1, it has a light that's going to light up when it detects a signal and then it has two other lights, a one kilohertz and a 40 hertz light that will light up when it's able to read the frequency. So immediately there's a difference right there, but it's more than just that LCD screen and I'll show you that in just a little bit. Now I'm just going to crank up the gain and we'll see which one lights up first. As you can see in the video, the DD1 actually lit up first. It started off a little bit dim, and then when it hit its full brightness, the DD1 Plus lit up. Now that doesn't mean that the DD1 Plus will always light up after the DD1. That just could be due to manufacturing variances between these two individual devices. And as you can see in the footage, the two lights went full bright at exactly the same time. So you really can't turn around for the difference between the two of them. I've had several viewers point out that if your amp has a clip light, you don't need either one of these. And I think that's probably quite accurate. And a lot of amplifiers are coming out with clip lights these days. And I've had a few viewers ask me to compare these devices to clip lights. Well, the JP8's got a clip light, so I'm gonna do that right now while I've got everything hooked up. Let's look at the clip light and see how it does. And as you can see, the clip light comes on and then in the background, out of focus, you can see the light on the DD1. And shortly after the clip light comes on, the light on the DD1 lights up. So the clip light on this base knob that goes with this particular amp lights up just a hair quicker than the DD1. So which one should you use and which one is right? Well, the way I see it, the question is, which do you want to lean towards? Would you rather have a little bit less power or have a little bit more clipping? If you're okay with a little bit less power, then the clip light on this set up right here will get the job done. If you want to squeeze a little more power out, the DD1 would be the better choice. And for those who were curious, I grabbed some footage comparing the clip light on the base knob to the clip light on the amplifier, and they light up at the exact same time. You'll notice it looks like the clip lights are flashing. It's not actually flashing. That's just picking up on camera. It has to do with the refresh rate on an LED light versus the frame rate on the camera. And I know what you're thinking. You're thinking it looks like the only difference between these two devices is the displays. So if that's the only difference, why would you pay more for this one when this one's going to do the same thing? Well, that's because this one actually does a little bit more. And for some of you, that little bit more might be worth the extra money. The first difference is that the DD1 Plus does display the voltage. So if you had a high power amplifier and a low power speaker and you want to turn the amplifier down to match the speaker, you can use the math plus voltage method along with the DD1 Plus in order to do that. Now that doesn't make it worth 
the extra money above the DD1. So what else does the DD1 Plus do? Well, the DD1 Plus takes that voltage information and it uses it to calculate gain overlap. What am I talking about by that? If you look at the test CDs that come with either device, both of them have a zero dB test tone. You use the zero dB test tone to set up your head unit, your digital signal processor, your equalizer, anything in the signal chain ahead of the amplifier. Then if you're using the DDD1 Plus, you're gonna use that exact same test tone to set the gain on your amplifier. And when the distortion light comes on, you hit this read button right here. When you hit the read button, that'll put this thing into overlap mode. Now you play the overlap tone, and then you can adjust the gain in order to dial in the amount of overlap that you want. I've got an entire video describing overlap. I'll put it up here at the top right here. Well, does that mean you can't use this device to set your overlaps? Actually, you can, because if you look at the test tone CD that comes with this device, you'll see that it comes with a negative five, negative 10, and negative 15 dB test tone. In order to set overlaps using the DD1, you follow the same procedure, use the zero dB test tone to set up everything from the head unit all the way to the amplifier, and then when you get to the amplifier, you use the negative five, negative 10, and negative 15 to set the overlap. The difference being the DD1 Plus lets you dial in specific amounts and you need a specific test tone to get a specific amount of overlap with the DD1. Now the main advantage to these devices over something like an oscilloscope or a multimeter is the simplicity and the downside is the price. Now for a professional that's working out of a shop that has to pump a lot of cars through rapidly, being able to simply and repeatedly accurately set up gains is worth the price of entry. I recommend it for someone working in a professional setting. Now for the more serious DIYer that might be competing or setting up a lot of amplifiers in a given time period, or someone like me that has a YouTube channel and is always tinkering with an amplifier, I think these are worth the money. But for the casual DIYer, I still recommend an oscilloscope. I'll make sure I'll give you a link to the one I like the best down in the description. Now earlier I said you could use the voltage display on this device right here or even a multimeter to set your gains when you're using a high powered amplifier with lower powered speakers. To learn how that process works, check out this video right here. Now to learn more about gain overlaps and how decibels work, check out this video right down here. And before I go, I wanna say thank you to my patrons. These are my $10 patrons right here with a special shout out to $25 patrons, Dylan, Bo, and Baba. I'm the DIY Audio Guy. I will see you on the next adventure.